let's go let's go on to the book floor now and talk about books. Can you believe, Bunny, that we are still getting crap for that freaking Milo Yiannopoulos book? Really? Yes. Still, still getting the business. We're still getting the business. The runaround, the rigmarole for this. Can't believe this. Now here's now here's a recap. Um, Milo Yiannopoulos, he's a uh, extreme right wing agitator, uh, alt right, Breitbart, yada yada yada. So this guy gets a major book deal, gets the, a huge amount of money from a major publisher, and then people say, hey, uh, that's wrong because this guy thinks that uh, gays should all be killed and Muslims should be turned into snakes. I don't know. Well, so, what really what really killed him is he pretty much came out in favor of pedophilia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so due to public pressure the book publisher drops his book deal. So he, he had already written the book. So he self published it. And because the alt right is the alt right. And because people aren't really buying books as much as they used to, it became a hit. It became such a hit online and Amazon and yada, 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 that yeah. suddenly people were coming into the bookstore and saying, how come you don't have Milo Yiannopoulos' book? This is obviously a liberal conspiracy. Mm -hmm. So then, finally, we did get the book in, but now, people are saying, how come you don't have Milo Yiannopoulos' book? I can't believe this liberal company. I am never coming back. Actually, sir, we do have it. It's back over here in our political section. Actually, it's not a political section. Our our domestic, uh, our our domestic uh, policy section. It's our politics section. It's back over here by the magazines. Let me take you over there. Yeah. But now what they're saying is, they're not saying how dare you don't carry Milo Yiannopoulos' book. Now they're saying. How dare you not have Milo Yiannopoulos' book right in front of your store? Why don't you have it in the front, right in front of the doors? This is a New York Times bestseller. And that, my friends, is what I want to end the show talking about. The New York Times freaking bestseller list. Yes. You see, despite what every 69-year-old cranky old woman thinks... The New York Times bestseller list is bull, and it is easily conned. So here is how you con the New York Times. If you have a big enough bank account, you can easily buy your way onto the New York Times bestseller list. I have known this for a long time. People who work with bookstores for a long time already know this. I have worked with this company for almost 17 years and I have worked with a number of employees. Well, well, I've worked with a bajillion and a half people. Yeah. And of all of those people, I have worked with a handful of people who in their travels have worked at New York Times sampling stores. The way that New York Times uh, compiles their New York Times bestseller list um, is, what did you just stick on me, Maxwell? You sticked dirty computer tape on me that is really weird maxwell that you would just randomly tape this into my armpit but uh you know what you do you i i know just just maybe not just attack people with that tape that was really weird um and in 15 years a new fetish is born uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's a japanese website yeah so what the you'll New York go to Times like does, X hamster or something like that, and you'll see yeah, yeah. armpit taping yeah. as as a whole category. Yeah. So the New York Times randomly chooses bookstores all across the nation, but primarily New York City, and tabulates their sales of books. But once these stores are discovered, there are there are people, there are companies, there are organizations that will literally call every bookstore across America. Hello, are you a New York Times sampling store? Yeah. And once the word gets out that you are a New York Times sampling store, um, uh, authors, 
publishers and private companies will take advantage of that. This is what they do. A publisher who wants a new book to be successful will find a New York Times sampling store. Oh, give me a kiss, Maxwell. I love you. Love you. Good night. Love you. Good night. You want to say good night, Maxwell? Good night, bunny. Good night, Maxwell. So... The publisher or the author or the private company that the author has hired or that the publisher has hired will find a New York Times sampling store. Then what they will do is they will do a bulk order, usually somewhere between 250 and 500 copies of, let's say, Bill O'Reilly's new book. Yeah. Then if they, they purchase these massive boxes of here's my 500 copies of Bill O'Reilly's new book. Then they will go back to that same store two weeks later and return all of them. Oh, this happens all of the time and across America. It has to be a low number though. It has to be 200 copies, 250, 300, 400 so that the New York times doesn't catch on. So if you try and order, yes, I would like to purchase 1,500 copies uh, of uh, Steve's new book, Booksellers Make Great Lovers. Yes. Then the New York Times goes, okay, well, that's obviously cheating, but Bill O'Reilly buying 200 copies of his book throughout America, uh, there's no way I can notice that. Yeah. So you have to spread it. The, the, the magic number, the magic number is at least 5,000 copies. You have to sell at least 5,000 copies in one week in order to make the New York Times bestseller list. Now, if ordering 200 copies of your new book at one store, that's not going to make a dent. But you spread that across 300, 500, 800 stores across America, you have got a bestseller on your hands. Oh, uh, huh. Okay. Sometimes it's an author, sometimes it's a publisher, sometimes that's too much work for you. So you can literally hire a company to do that for you. In 2013, Forbes magazine had a very interesting profile on one of these companies. They're called Result Source, all one word, and there is a company and you hire them to make your book a success. You pay them a crap ton of money and they will guarantee that you can say New York Times bestselling author Bunny Williams. Huh. There's also the fact that there are a number of New York Times bestseller lists. People say, oh, well, it's number one on the New York Times bestseller list. But what you don't realize is there is a New York Times bestseller list for fiction, for nonfiction, for kids books, for uh, gardening books, for teen books, for teen romance books, for teen science fiction books, for home improvement books. And it's like, you might not be the number one New York Times bestseller. You just might be, you might have been number 183 on the New York Times bestseller list for adult-oriented computer design books. Yes. But still, you get to put New York Times bestselling author on your book. So this is a scam, a successful scam. So many big name authors do this, especially conservative authors. This is what they do. They will make sure that every bookstore across America gets maybe five copies of their new book. Meanwhile, they go off to the side and do the 500 copy scam. So then old people see, wait a second, this conservative book is on the New York Times bestseller list. I'm going to go to my store looking for it. And then poor guys like me say, I'm sorry, we're all sold out. Why are you sold out? This is on the New York Times bestseller list. It's creating a false demand and it's BS and it works. Normal people don't know about this, but it happens all the time. It is the bane of my existence. So is Milo on the best-selling list? He is on the best-selling list. Yeah. He is on the best-selling list, despite the fact that that up until like two a month ago, no major bookstore carried it on the shelf. Yeah. There is a good chance that he bought his own copies of the book and then said, 
this is the New York Times bestseller list. How come Walmart doesn't carry it? Walmart should carry it. If they don't carry it and it's a New York Times bestseller list, then it's obvious that Walmart hates Jesus. <laughs> it's a scam. It happens all the time and it works. And it, you try and tell people that, no, it's not that. Well, how come you didn't order more copies of the book? We, we ordered as many as we can. This is actually a scam and you're falling for it. These are things we can't tell you, customers. Yeah. But it's very rare for this scam not to work. But that is what happened recently with the alleged teen book Handbook for Mortals by first-time author Lant Serum. Yes. I say alleged teen book because literally no one has this book. It's the first book in a series and the first book published by website geeknation.com. The book isn't available on Amazon. And here's the thing. Everything is available on Amazon. I can buy a five-gallon jug of horse urine if I wanted to, and <laughs> it will arrive at my house in two days. But I can't buy Handbook for Mortals by Lance Serum. <laughs> the book is also not available at Barnes and Noble stores or at BN.com, which I would once again like to say that this podcast is in no way affiliated with. So here's how this scam failed. No one has this book. You can't get the book. You can't buy the book. The only way you can buy the book is through the author's own personal website. And yet, this they, they, geeknation.com did no press for it. There was no book tour. There were no commercials for it. They yeah. did no advertising for it. But suddenly, this book is on, number one on the New York Times teens bestseller list past these other major books that are really huge. And so people are like, wait a second. Why is this book that it, finally a few people are like, wait, why is this book that no one carries number one on the New York Times bestseller list? And they did some investigating and they found out that apparently the author and the publisher are like, hey, Hollywood, uh, we are the most popular. We are the most powerful people in Hollywood because we are the authors and owners of a teen trilogy. <laughs> And Hollywood's like, you own a teen trilogy? Oh, thank God. We are desperate for stuff. Do you know how many streaming things there are right now? Yeah. Everything is has a streaming channel. We desperately need content. Wait a second. Is your teen series popular? Yes. In fact, we uh, are. The first book in the series is about to hit the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so some people went looking around and it turns out, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This book, literally, they just did the, the 5,000 copies scam. Yeah. And it re it just a few days ago, the New York times officially pulled the book handbook for mortals from their New York times bestseller list. Oh, that's not fair. Yeah, well, it, like I can understand, I can understand why they did it. You know, it, it, I'm. You know, they were just trying to get a, a movie deal. The mm -hmm. most powerful people in Hollywood are uh, teen authors with a trilogy. Yeah. Right. You know? So, yeah. So what have we learned, Charlie Brown? We learned that scamming the New York Times is surprisingly easy to do. Yes. And, and, and also, uh, yeah, if you really want to make money, uh, write teen sci-fi romances. 